All praises to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Makak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawam to the elect of the nation of Israel. This lesson is going to be about how you've got a lot of people that try and think that they get allowance to the things that the Israelites have been promised. Right, allowance to the things that the Israelites have been told they are going to receive from the Lord Yahweh. Right, from the Most High Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. Right, they think that they have got access to these things and the reasoning behind why they say these things is a multitude of different reasons. But what I'm going to be asking in this lesson, right, is was what the Israelites said they were going to be given, right? Can can you receive it by keeping the law, right? Because was it about the law why the Israelites was told, okay, this land is going to be given to you all of these things are going to be given to you. Was that because of the law, right? Did the law make them no longer be about to get those things? Because if the law, it was about the law so much, right? Well, every nation of people can read the laws of the of the Israelites, right? And every single nation of people could apply those laws within their nation, right? If we're thinking about it in a technical way, everyone could pick up the Bible, right? as it stands right now on earth and go and make those laws be the law of their land, right? So obviously we know that it's not about that because those things was not granted to everybody. Now, is it about circumcision? Because every nation's men could circumcise their child on the eighth day, right? And then they would be accepted into the covenant according to what Christianity tries to say because they try and say to us, oh, was you circumcised and stuff like that? Always oh, circumcision and all of that, right? They try and say, oh, he's neither Jew nor Greek and all of this. So are they saying that because if they was to keep the law, then that would mean that they're going to get a covenant? Uh, it did, the things that they say ultimately don't make any sense because the things that the Israelites was said to be given came from a promise. It had nothing to do with the laws. It had nothing to do with circumcision because these things were all offered before Abraham was circumcised, right? And before the Israelites was given the law, they were told these things. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. In fact, excuse me, before the Israelites even existed, they was promised their land. Before they existed, before Abraham even had any children, the Israelites were promised the land. And they was also prophesied to go into slavery. And the nation that put them in slavery was also prophesied to suffer for putting them in slavery. And there was also another nation of people that was prophesied to be judged for committing iniquity in the land that Yahweh was going to give to the descendants of Abraham. All of these things were pre-planned, pre-ordained. Just like how the salvation of the Israelites, the, the prophecies of the seed of the house of Israel being gathered out of every single country is going to be fulfilled. But let me read the scripture. I don't want to talk too much, man. But if I'm talking the scriptures, then Lord will. It's not just me babbling. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made, he saith not unto seeds as of many. <coughs> <coughs> but as of one and to die seed which is our mashayak so the, the promise wasn't given to many seed lines of abraham right it went through one particular seed line isaac right it went through isaac man and if you read the history of the israelites right if you read about the if you read the book of genesis which speaks on the process of how yahweh decided to make the israelites be his chosen nation for no other reason and that's what he wanted to do right he chose abraham because he wanted to choose abraham then he chose isaac out of them eight sons because he wanted to choose isaac then he chose israel instead of esau because he wanted to but before abraham noah found grace in his sight and after noah right noah had three sons hamsham and japheth 
Now, Yahweh decided of his own wisdom to choose Shem out of those three sons. He could have chose any of them, but he wanted to choose Shem. Just like when you come to the time of the Israelites, he wanted to choose the Israelites rather than the Edomites to be the nation that was chosen. There was no reason that he could have chose, couldn't have chose Esau instead, apart from that he wanted to choose Jacob. That's it. Verse 17, And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Amashiach, the law, <coughs> which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect exactly. So the things that the Israelites were promised, the law doesn't make that of none effect now, because then it wouldn't be of a promise. Verse 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, exactly. Because that would mean that any heathen could keep Yahweh's laws, and that now means that they are going to get the covenant as well with the Israelites, or that would mean that any Gentile can keep the laws, and that would mean that they're going to get it. Or that would mean that according to how Christianity tries to come with it, that they can say from their mouth, but not really in their actions, that they believe in the Messiah that died for the Israelites' sins, and that would somehow mean that even though they didn't have no sins according to the same covenant as the Israelites, that now they are somehow covered and they are somehow in the same promises as Abraham, even though their lineage has might have nothing to do with Abraham at all. They might not even go back through the line of Shem at all. They might not even go back to any of Abraham's sons. But according to Christianity, that will mean that they're part of the promises of Abraham, even though they might go back to a completely different son of Noah. They might be from Japheth or Ham. But according to Christianity, that can somehow mean that they are part of Abraham's promise. When the people that was given the promise of the Israelites are the Israelites, the people that was given the promise of Abraham are the Israelites. Excuse me, let me say it like that. Verse 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise, exactly. <coughs> <coughs> Wherefore, then service the law, it was added because of transgressions to the seed that should come to whom the promise was made. Exactly. To the seed that should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So the law is special. That's what serves the law. That's the ultimate way to live. But it couldn't be shown. It's true beauty couldn't be shown because the people that it was given to were stiff-necked and rigid and a stiff-necked people as the scripture says about the Israelites on a continual basis but people thinking that the Israelites haven't been given this because they are um they sinned is stupid and people asking us always which is this which is what they always try and do man they always say prove that you're an Israelite but then I've never seen any of these people say the same thing to those people in the land of Israel not none of these people in the land of Israel have a genealogy like this that that exists, right? This is the genealogy of Yahweh Shai, right? Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. The book of the generation of Yahweh Shai Hamashayak, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac. So Yahweh Shai's genealogy goes all the, went all the way back to Abraham. That's how much in-depth searching of the of the genealogy and the fathers went for Yahweh Shai's genealogy. Now, can any of those people in the land of Israel say that? Can they? Because if not, then they should really shut their mouths, all these people that try and ask us to go and search our genealogy. Because, like, they, these people talk about DNA and all that, all of that stuff, right? Well, let's say that during the time when the Israelites was taken out of the land of Israel in, this, in Samaria and was replaced by a different people, by, by the Assyrian king, right if at that time those people that was living in the land you took a sample of their dna right of those people that were not really israelites pretending to be in the land and you took a sample of their dna and every single time an israelite wanted to try and test if they was an israelite <coughs> it had to be compared to one of those people's dna that are not really israelites but that was used as the foundation to say oh because i'm in the land i'm an israelite so if your DNA does not match my DNA, you are not an Israelite now. How many actual Israelites 
of those 10 tribes that was kicked out of the land, how many of their DNA would have matched the DNA of those people that were now in the land that's being used as a foundation that decides whether you are or are not an Israelite? How many of their DNA would have matched that? And that's what I mean with these people. They don't think things through. They change the rules when it's us. They change the rules so that the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American cannot be an Israelite, especially the tribes that look like so-called black people, man. That's who they, they have nightmares about this, man. They have nightmares about us having power over them because that is the worst thing in possible imagination for them. They prefer the doctrine that you're going to burn in hell forever than a doctrine that they are going to be slaves to us. Because they actually really think in their ignorant minds that they are better than us. Verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law because the laws of Yahweh is the best way to live. Right? It's the best way to live, man. <coughs> <coughs> verse 22 but the scripture have concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Yahweh Shammashayak might be given to them that believe now this is where when Christians get triggered by the word all and they just assume that it means everyone but the verses prior let you know that it's not talking about everyone it's clearly talking about the people that are Ab considered Abraham's seed and the people that the promises have been made which when you go to Romans 9 and 4 it clearly lets you know that the promises, the covenant and the giving of the law have all been given to the Israelites. And since I mentioned it, and some people might have not read that before, let me show it. Because if you're a person saying that the Gentiles can receive the same things as the Israelites, you're basically trying to take away things from the Israelites and you're saying that the Israelites went through all of these blessings and curses, in particular the curses, just for everybody else to get it. And you're saying that the Edomites was able to pretty much find a loophole and not have to go through the curses themselves and in fact be one of the nations that perform the curses of the is on of Deuteronomy 28 on the Israelites because they was the people burning down the cities with the rest of the heathen. They was the people slaughtering Israelites as they was fleeing from the land of Egypt. You're saying that the, that the Israelites was able to went into slavery for 400 years. Well, how comes Esau didn't join in that slavery then? Because he's part of, has exactly the same lineage as the Israelites up until the point of Isaac, right? So how comes, if he can get the blessings with us, how comes a person sharing pretty much exactly the same lineage and genealogy, right? Being a twin of Jacob, how comes he didn't have to go 400 years in slavery with, with Jacob, but then somehow able to get the blessings? And get and say that he believes like these Christians don't make any sense, man. But anyway, Romans chapter nine and verse four, who are the Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises. Simple as that. Verse five, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, Yahweh Shai came for the Israelites. He came to die for the sins that was under the first covenant. And he came to teach the Israelites certain things that they was getting mistaken according to the law. And they was forgetting that the laws is all about mercy more so than just being rigid and keeping laws. So there might be a time where you can just keep a Sabbath and you don't have to do no work whatsoever. But there might be another time where on a Sabbath you need to help somebody. And it's more, it's more important to help an Israelite than to just be so rigid in laws. It's more important to think of the found two foundational things of the law, <coughs> which is to love Yahweh with all your heart and with all your soul, and to love your neighbor like you love yourself. So if and your 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 Israelite brother was struggling on the time in the Sabbath, well that would mean that you would help him, even if it went against a certain rule of what the Sabbath said, because that means that you're doing one of the more foundational things. But Christianity don't know nothing about this. And they spend all of their time trying to say to us, prove that you're an Israelite, prove that you're an Israelite, prove that you're an Israelite. But the people in the land of Israel right now, can they prove that they are an Israelite? The same way how Yahweh Shai proved that he was one? Can, can they prove it how David proved that he had one? Can they, can, have they got a lineage that goes back like that to Abraham? No, they don't. 
No, they do not. And if any of them say that they do, they're a liar. So they'll just do a DNA test, right? Not knowing what the hell is happening in that lab, right? Not being like, hang on, what's the race of this person that gave me this, gave me this um test? I'm going to sabotage the test. You think Esau's got integrity that he ain't going to add in some lineage or just randomise it? You could probably do a DNA test 10 times with the same company and you'll get different results. Has anybody ever tested doubt? But they just believe a DNA test every single time, man. As if all these things that these Edomites have shown to do in their society are not corrupt. But you're just going to put your trust in, in a DNA test when you don't know what you wasn't there. You don't understand the concept of how it works. <coughs> you don't understand none of that. Like, how are you going to put the concept of your lineage in a DNA test, right? When you can see that your people are fulfilling prophecies in the book. You can see that there's curses that are written in this book. And your people are have went through those things and are going through them. But you think that we're going to stop believing that we're Israelites if a DNA test said that we're Irish and Ethiopian. I would not stop believing that I'm an Israelite. Because of that, I don't care what a DNA test would say. Neither would I waste my time doing one because I don't trust Esau, man. We don't trust these devils. So it wouldn't matter what a DNA test says. Because the point is, are the seed of Israel still on the earth? How about that for, for, for a topic? Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 8. Verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahweh liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the land of the north, and from all countries where I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So don't be asking us about no DNA test, because the seed of Israel is on the earth, and Yahweh knows who they are. Yahweh knows who they are, man. And they're not going to be who you think they are. You people are going to be stumped, man. But it's all right, man. Yahweh's turned up your scoffing settings so that you people don't want to hear anything that we say. Yahweh's turned up the scoffer mold, man. So that you people just reject everything that we say, right? And just go about things your own way, man. I'm going to end the lesson there. All praises to Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Wakakwadash. And double honors to our teachers, man, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel, who are the Israelites that are going to receive salvation in the day of the Lord's wrath. Shalom.